Welcome back to another spill drop tutorial. Now I want to jump into this new, I guess you could call it an exploit that I saw featured in a blazed video. Now this is a Dave Rust original concept from what I can tell and I'm really excited to show you how it comes together and how it works because this kind of blew my mind when I saw it for the first time. The concept involves taking your industrial system, this sort of automated system that links conveyors and adapters to furnaces and boxes or barrels in this case, and allows you to move ore from a barrel or a box like this into the furnaces where it smelts into metal fragments and is then conveyed out of these furnaces back into their original receptacle. It's a pretty convenient system for saving you a lot of time so that you're not constantly tending to your furnaces and trying to keep your base running. The standard system that you would see in most bases is pretty straightforward. It features a box of some sort with an adapter, two conveyors, and however many furnaces they'd like to attach to the system with their own respective adapters. The way it works is you've got a small box with an adapter that has an input and an output node. The output node connects to a conveyor taking whatever material is in this box and pumping it into this conveyor. So so this conveyor will look for metal ore from this box and then convey it out of this conveyor into this furnace up here. That furnace also has its own adapter which will take ore in and pass ore through to these other furnaces here. Once it has smelted that ore into metal fragments, all three of these furnaces will pump that metal fragment stack into this conveyor here which will then pump those metal fragments into this box. That's a very normal standard system. You do need a little bit of power to run these conveyors. So you can see I've got a battery there to do that. And of course you need power to run the furnaces, which I've got coming off of this battery here for the lower level and this battery here for the upper level. They pull off of these splitters that are fed by the batteries directly. Now the exploit that was shown in that video featured one of these barrels, either the vertical one or the horizontal one worked just fine, and having multiple adapters daisy chained together on this barrel. For some reason, having these adapters daisy chained together accelerates the process by which the ore is output from this barrel into this conveyor and then pumped into these furnaces. This essentially making your base a little bit more efficient by reducing the time it takes to move ore from this barrel into these furnaces and back into this barrel as metal fragments. I've got a system here to illustrate how this process works. These two lights correspond with these two circuits. So whenever this conveyor is no longer able to find ore in this barrel, this light will turn on, signaling that all of the output material has been output through the system into these furnaces. I have the same setup up top here for this small box. So this light here connects to this conveyor. When this box is empty of metal ore, this light will turn on as triggered by this conveyor. We're going to see just how much more efficient the daisy chained barrel is than this small box with just the one connection to the industrial system. So we're going to split 1000 metal ore between these two containers, this box here and this barrel. And when I flip this switch, it's going to turn on the conveyors and start the process. Once one of these lights turns on, we're going to start the timer to compare how fast this updated system is compared to the original. You can see that material is already starting to move through these conveyors. And if you check the containers, you can already see a distinct difference in the speed. But this one's about to turn this light on. And then that top light will turn on here shortly once that top box is empty of ore. 
there we go. So that is the time difference between the two systems and how much more efficient this bottom system with the daisy chained adapters is compared to this upper system with just the one input source. Now, technically, uh, this barrel still just has one input source. The output from this barrel is coming from this top adapter down into the system. The input, which is the metal fragments from this system down here, comes up and into this bottom adapter. It's essentially two different connections to the circuit, which I think is why it's a little bit faster. I'm not entirely sure, but I do believe that is the reason. Having these other adapters daisy chained should help to accelerate the system as well by moving material through more adapters, but I'm not entirely sure how these impact the system as a whole. Let's see if we remove these, how that will change the speed. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to do 500 metal ore, 500 metal ore down here. I've removed the daisy chain on the back of this barrel to see how the speed compares with just having the one input to the system and output from the furnace system here. Go ahead and compare these again. All right, so there is the very standard system versus the single barrel with only two adapters on the circuit. I wanted to do some further efficiency testing with these various configurations. We've seen that the daisy chain system seems to have some effects on efficiency, but I wanted to do a proper full test of a few different variants to see what gave us the best results. Daisy chaining these things together does not have to be be as uh, neat as I'm doing it here, but I'm just showing you some examples for how you can kind of link these together and have them looking a little bit nicer while you benefit from the advantages of higher efficiency smelting. All right, looks kind of nice. All of these are a little bit different. I'm gonna run through these designs pretty quickly here so you get the idea of how they're all laid out. This first system uses just two adapters total, one barrel, and two conveyors. The second system here has three adapters total, two conveyors, one barrel, one furnace. This third system has three adapters, two conveyors, one furnace, and one barrel, but these two adapters are daisy chained together in the front, as you can see, which is a little different from this setup here. This next setup is a little bit more complicated. So we've got six adapters total. We've got two on the furnace and four on this barrel. We've got two conveyors, furnace, and the barrel, of course. The adapters here in the front are daisy chained together, as are the ones in the back here. And these furnace adapters are also daisy chained together. This next setup has just four adapters in total for conveyors, a furnace, a barrel, and then these and switches back here are just for the light indicators, which I'll get to here in just a minute. Each of the two adapters on this system are connected to their own respective conveyors back here, and those are in turn connected to their own separate adapter on the furnace. This system here has five adapters, two conveyors, a furnace, and a barrel. These adapters are daisy chained together, as are these on the back. However, there is only one adapter on the furnace rather than the two for the previous design over here that is very similar. Now this design has six adapters in total, two on the furnace, four on this barrel. It has four conveyors, the two and switches, the furnace, and the barrel here. Now each of these adapters has its own set of conveyors back here and unlike the previous design that was similar this design is daisy chained in the back with two additional adapters so this design over here did not include those adapters 
And this system here is not attached to anything other than the conveyors and the lights. It is fully locked up and nothing's going to be happening here except we're going to get some lights out of it. Now, I've got this system set up so that when I step on this pressure plate, it activates that switch, which will turn on all of the conveyors in the back. The conveyors themselves are hooked up to these lights here in front of the barrels. The light on the left here indicates whether or not there is ore in this box being transferred through the conveyor into the furnace. This second light indicates whether or not there are metal fragments in the furnace being moved into the barrel. When there's no more metal ore in this barrel, this light here will turn on. And when there are no more metal fragments in that furnace, this light will turn on. So you may notice that when I first start the system, many of the right hand lights will start on because the furnaces have not generated any fragments yet. That sort of explains that without any ore in these boxes, I'll show you what happens if we just turn the whole thing on. Fantastic. All the lights turn on. So that indicates that nothing is moving through the conveyors right now. We're going to do just 30 metal ore in each barrel to test this initially because the system with just one furnace cooks very slowly and the wait time is kind of annoying. We've got the metal ore in all of our barrels ready to be transferred into those furnaces and smelted into metal fragments. Let's go ahead and see just how well this system works. All right, we're gonna try this again, just to make sure that we get everything right. I'm not 100% convinced by those results. All right, and there you have it. We're gonna go ahead and try it one more time, and I'm just going to make a slight adjustment here. All right, now with this variation, we have ensured that all of the furnaces are also in the same tick. We went ahead and turned them off. Turn them all back on at the same time, so they should all be operating at the exact same tick rate and starting at the same time, which should hopefully balance out any other potential variables here. Let's go ahead and run that test one more time. Okay, so in this test, this layout over here was the fastest for transferring metal ore. And this one over here was the fastest for smelting. Thanks for watching this experimental video. I'm glad we could do something like this. So I'm pretty excited with how this all turned out. If you have any questions about anything in this video, or if you want to see me experiment more with these furnace systems and how to make them a little bit more efficient and convenient for your base, let me know down in the comments and I will gladly make that happen. Thanks again for watching. This has been your friend Spilldrop and I will catch you in the next video.